Okay, hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is more of a uh, show and tell video. Not necessarily an unboxing in the traditional, traditional sense of uh, ordering something and unboxing it and seeing what you ordered. These are a couple sets of pencils. This one watercolor, this one's kind of just traditional colored pencil that were returned to me apparently by my mom. <laughs> okay. And she says that I bought her uh, three sets of uh, colored pencils back when, and uh, she kept the smallest set. She used to do a lot more rubber stamping, doing a lot less now, trying to get rid of stuff. All right, starting with this set right here. Rexel Derwent watercolor pencils, water-soluble pencils. Never used them before. I have known people to use um, watercolor pencils for both the water-soluble aspect of them, but also just as colored pencils. I knew someone that liked watercolored pencils over colored pencils because they liked um, the consistency of them. They said they, they felt they were softer than whatever brand of colored pencils she happened to use at the time. I've only, I've used colored pencils through the years, but really minimally, okay, until this last year when I started doing things on um, vellum and this other type of paper called, um, it's a Mohawk Everyday Digital White Coated Silk. It's kind of a, uh, a paper that's in between matte and glossy. Let me just show it to you right here. This is what it looks like. Mohawk uh, is the brand. Everyday Digital is the line of uh, paper. And then the white coated silk is the type of everyday digital paper. There's white coated silk. There's probably matte, and there's, I don't know if there's an everyday digital glossy, but white coated silk um, kind of has the benefit of being slightly coated. Okay, it's, uh, it's a cardstock, so it has a clay coating, but it also has a little bit of an extra coating similar to a glossy, but just very minimally um, applied. So it's much closer to a matte. You see there's no kind of gloss to it at all. There's a little bit of a sheen to it. So you get the benefit of really good impressions, but this paper, while it has no tooth to it, it's really smooth. It's matte, kind of based enough to where you can apply media such as uh, colored pencils really well, and not as good as a watercolor pencil or something, you know, paper. Um, but it's good enough where you can lay down several layers of colored pencil, um, you know, even though it's very smooth. Okay, so that being said, that type of um, paper has really kind of opened up some possibilities to me for getting really good stamp impressions, but having a paper that's accepting enough of dry media, colored pencils, chalks, that type of thing, um, which is the best of both worlds for stampers, okay? So, um, you know, you can do these things on matte cardstock as well. Um, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I like to have a little bit of a coating on it so that um, if I'm using especially wet media, in addition to dry media, you get that um, uh, aspect of the wet media staying a little bit more surface oriented than a matte medium, which is absorbing it all. Okay, so anyway, so a lot of times when I've used things like colored pencils in the past, it's in conjunction with some dye-based inks, okay? I, you know, usually when I'm using colored pencils, I'm going multimedia. I'll lay down some inks and I'll use these types of colored pencils for detailed areas, you know, that you just can't get into with, you know, paper towel or, you know, when I'm applying colors with, uh, you know, a cotton ball or something like that. It's not going to be as detail-oriented as a sharpened, you know, colored pencil like this or a fine point, you know, pencil. All right, so I've been using uh, Barrel Prismacolors. This set right here is probably 35 years old. I'm guessing I got it as a student uh, in college uh, for one of my classes. All right, so the Derwent pencils right here, um, as far as a, a water-soluble type of pencil, my mom never used these at all. <clears throat> I don't even remember buying these for her, but she says I did. And um, I have been intrigued by the, um, the potential of these to, you know, color an area and then to go into it with 
you know, a paintbrush with some water on it and to um, put into solution that type of ink to make more of a watercolor -y type of look. I don't know if, if anyone, if these are to be used. I'll have to read the instructions, you know, on this type of thing or watch some videos. But, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of watercolorists lay down some um, water and then they go into it with, you know, watercolor paints and stuff like that. I don't know if that's something that you do with the watercolor pencils, if that's a technique or whatnot, but I would probably be using these with my Mohawk Everyday Digital, you know, kind of a coated paper, uh, if I'm using it, especially with um, stamps, you know, because I want a real clean stamp impression um, to use these with. Okay, so you're doing something like this and you're going into water-soluble types of um, applications, then you're going to want to use something like a, probably a Stazon or something like that that's not going to go back into solution with the water. I don't know, maybe even a Versafine Claire would work. I don't know. Uh, the Versafine Claire's are oil-based, so maybe it wasn't wouldn't go back into solution by using um, water over the top of it. Please leave in the comment section if you've uh, used uh, water-soluble types of pencils, watercolor pencils, with your um, stamping projects and the best way to use them. I'm open to <laughs> you know, suggestion, advice, everything like that. I want to know how to use these, and it would increase, you know, my learning curve exponentially. You know, if someone just says, "Hey, you know, use it this way," you know, or "Don't use it with this type of thing," you know, I'm guessing if I use it with the dye-based ink. You know, I don't know if you heat set these types of things, you know, going water based into water, you know, you know, dyes, I would imagine it's going to blur it or whatnot. Maybe that's part of the technique. I don't know. So anyways, this is a brand new set, never been touched, you know. Um, I don't know. Thanks, mom. Uh, we'll have to use these and try them out. There's so many different, so much media that I haven't tried out there before, but I've always kind of been intrigued by, obviously, not enough to go out and actually do it, but, uh, you know, being that I have it here, might as well give it a shot. Okay, so anyways, um, I looked at these online, and they're still available, but the curious thing about this, I went on the Derwent website, and I didn't do, you know, a real deep inspection of it, but I didn't see the watercolors on it, but I did see these being sold on other websites, so I guess they're still available, but are they still in production? I have no idea. I would think they are, unless there's been other brands that have come out that are, I don't know, just more popular or whatever. Or I don't know if they were discontinued or not. I have no idea. If you know, let us know. In the, like I said, the comment section. Okay, now, Design Spectra Colors. I remember these, you know, this brand being, you know, around back when. I think it was one of the main brands, I think, when Barrel Prismacolors were out there. I looked online, these were not available, but I, I don't know, that some other brand came up and I thought, oh, maybe, you know, that's the name of the brand now. But I looked on these other websites that kept coming up and it was like rarepencils.com or something like that, or, you know, several different websites with that type of theme to it, you know, discontinued things, I guess. And one of the um, little entries were the design specter colors. It went into a little bit of a history of them. And it said that they closed up in 1999. So, I don't know. Uh, that's a really long time, you know, which gives you kind of a pretty good indication of how aware I am of colored pencils out there. Brand new set. Absolutely brand new. This is like this foam type of little padding here for these pencils. And the foam has transferred on here. You can see it right here, how indented it is. So... Uh, a brand new set. I'm almost like hesitant to use these now. It's like, oh my gosh, maybe this is maybe this is so rare. It's like a collector's item now. You know, I saw um, messages and posts that, oh my gosh, I found a set, but you know, there was only a couple pencils missing or a couple pencils used. This is an absolute brand new set. Not one of them has ever been used. You know, I don't know. You know. Uh, I was wondering if I'm. I was wondering if I bought this for my mom or if she saw a demonstration at a convention and bought it and just never used it. I know, you know, all of us can relate to something like that. I have a lot of uh, things that I bought and never used. I started really experimenting last year um, with things like colored pencils on uh, when I got into vellum. It was perfect for vellum applications. And again, that uh, Mohawk Everyday Digital 
um, silk paper uh, is really good for colored pencils. I like doing a lot of multi, you know, multimedia. You know, like I said, colored pencils are really fantastic for um, detailed little areas or getting nuances or even texture on things like um, structures, like uh, my covered bridge or cabins, things like that. Stuff that you just can't get into, you know, with, you know, other types of media that are more kind of uh, area oriented, you know, filling in a whole area with color. You know, even um, kind of detailed types of um, pens, you know, which I think um, alcohol markers or just fine point markers are really fantastic for. Um, I have a, you know, I tend to think that colored pencils are something that you can get into an even more detailed area along with a little bit of extra texture and I do love texture. A lot of people, I don't know, uh, people love smooth textures and that's a texture too, but uh, one of the things that I find the most fantastic about things like colored pencils is the visible kind of rougher textures that people can achieve through the use of kind of multi-layered colored pencil works, you know. Texture is kind of a invisible texture is a very, very valued um, kind of visual tool in art. So I don't know, people talk about gamisole and stuff like that. And that's, let, let's get rid of all the texture of colored pencils and, you know, uh, markers, do markers, you know, people, when they ask a brand, okay, when you blend them, is it like completely invisible? So, I mean, people want like a machine type of um, transitions of colors with like the absence of texture, which is absolutely the thing that you go for when you're in art school, you utilize texture to effect. So you might have some areas that are really smooth in contrast with areas that are highly textured. So you, you get a textural range in there and not just everything's like absolutely smooth, but I don't know, that seems to be the consensus type of thing, and I don't know how that got out there in the crafting world, but um, the utilization of texture is really important and having a range of it, and that's where colored pencils are really fantastic for. So things like, um, you know, glossy card stocks or something like that aren't going to be ideal for something like this, so you want to go with something with some tooth to it. I don't know. I have this whole kit here of uh, some different colors. My barrel Prismacolor set is a range of 48 colors, and this one is a set of 60. Gosh, I'm he a little hesitant to use it now, you know. that uh, This is uh, something that's been discontinued for, what, you know, 20-some-odd years, 22, 23 years now. And it's brand new, and I guess it's like all these rare pencil, you know, websites, you know, and whatnot. But I don't know, you know, tools are meant to be used, and uh, if there's some different colors on here, and there should be, I don't know, at least 12 different colors that are different than what I have. I don't know, I'll give it a try sometime. Um, gosh, it has all this kind of little fuzz. I'll probably work this off and. Maybe if I do that, I'm going to remove this foam here that's, you know, disintegrating on here at this point in time. But anyway, uh, thanks, Mom, for the, uh, you know, the, I guess, return of the pencils and whatnot. I'll have to give them a shot. As we can see here, she never utilized them. And I don't know what the other brand of set that she said I got her is, but she said it's smaller, you know, so she still has some... Uh, Pencils to use, but wanted to get rid of some things, you know, that were, you know, taking up room and whatnot that she was never getting around to use. So I'll try to make use of them and, uh, you know, we'll see um, how, you know, these different pencils are from each other on the different types of surfaces, too. So um, I don't know. I'll give them a try. Really curious about the watercolor ones, though. But anyways, yeah, like I said, if any... If you have some advice for me on any of these different types of um, uh, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, usage, um, I'm really curious about the design too, the Spectre colors and how they compare to the, you know, the Prisma colors if you've utilized them over time and have a lot of experience with that. Let me know what you think in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, how they compare and how they contrast with one another. You know, uh, be kind of curious to know before I really get into it. So anyways, a couple new sets. Should be fun stuff to uh, kind of play around with and, uh, you know, see what we can come up with. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, 
uh, hope to uh, hope to hear from you and learn from you if you kind of know anything about these things. So, uh, yeah. Until the next video. Thanks again for watching.